I've spent the last year hunting for the perfect password manager, and I've recently been hearing a lot about ProtonPass, so I wanted to dig in to see what was all the buzz about. And the question is, why did I start this hunt in the first place? Well, the reason is because hackers want your passwords. The Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report found that in 89% of the investigations that they did, it involved the use of stolen credentials. 49% of that was involving an external threat actor. And to take this one step further, hackers love when you reuse the same password on multiple websites. There's an attack known as credential stuffing where hackers will try to go and take stolen passwords and then log into a variety of different websites guessing the right password. This is scary enough, but when you look at a digital shadows report that says there are over 15 billion stolen passwords on the dark web from over 100,000 data breaches, this is what becomes a problem. And password managers are a very critical step in solving this problem because they allow you to easily manage unique passwords for every single website that you use, and it just makes the login experience so much easier. Okay, so enough about password managers. Let's actually dig into ProtonPass. ProtonPass was founded in 2014 in Switzerland after a bunch of nerds, I mean scientists, got together and decided that they wanted to build a better internet where privacy is default. They first launched with ProtonMail, which is one of the most privacy-focused mail programs out there. They then went into ProtonVPN, which is a VPN provider, also focused on privacy. From there, they started expanding into other things like Proton Calendar and Proton Drive, which is hitting closer home to a direct competitor to Google. Where things got really interesting, and we're gonna dig into this more, is when in 2022, when they bought a company called Simple Login. And I think this is gonna become one of the key differentiators for them. We finally get to 2023, and that's when Proton Pass is starting to come into light. The beta was first released in April of 2023, with general availability in June of 2023. So it's still a little bit of an infant, but we're gonna dig into it to see just how it stacks up. And I'm really curious to understand with privacy first, how they're gonna be looking at this. So let's first start with the features. So you can see it's an open source and encrypted password manager, which is great, but let's take a look at it a little bit deeper. So great, they can generate secure passwords, check. They allow for easy sign-in, check. And then we can see that it's not just a password manager, but an identity manager. And this gets back to the acquisition that I mentioned before. That acquisition of Simple Login in 2022 provided Proton the ability to generate unique email addresses for any account. This is really interesting because now you can create a brand new identity for every single online application. It's not just a unique password, it's also a unique email address or username that you can use to log in to that application. We can see on their website that there's a three-step process that gets followed. Whenever you're about to sign up for a new account, you'll get prompted to see if you want to use a unique email address. When that email address receives an email, it simply forwards it over to your primary email address. And you don't lose the ability to reply from that unique email address either. It's a complete standalone email account that works seamlessly with your primary email. And the best part about this is if that account is impacted in a data breach, you can simply get rid of it it automatically can take care of disabling that for you. One of the potential downsides of ProtonPass is it only allows you to do an online version of this password vault. So you can't store this locally. So let's take a look at ProtonPass's security to get a little bit more comfortable with how they're approaching keeping your passwords safe. If we go back to their website, we can start to see some of the features that they have here. Specifically, end-to-end -end encryption. When we're looking at the encryption that's used to protect your passwords, it's 256-bit AES GCM. The important thing to understand here is that this is quantum-resistant encryption. That means that quantum computers will not be in a position to crack this, at least for the foreseeable future. That means it's extra security for your passwords. The other cool thing is that this is all open source code, so anyone has access to see the code itself. You just go to their website, click on the link and you can access their GitHub repo where all of their code exists. And with that, all of their security is independently audited. So again, you just go to their website and you can get access to their security reports. All of the information on how they're doing and what an independent auditor has seen or not seen. And if you're really curious, you can check it out by just going to their website again. You can have a ball reading through this. And lastly, if privacy is your thing, which it probably should be, then rest assured that they are leading the pack with how they look at privacy. 
specifically because they are based in Switzerland, which has some of the strongest privacy rules that are out there. So now that we can feel pretty good about their security, what about supported applications? Well, they've got you covered there as well. If you go to their download page, you can see that they support most of the major browsers that are out there, whether it's Firefox, Chrome, Brave, Edge, or they also have a mobile app for both your iOS or your Apple or Android. Now, the important thing to understand here is that you have to access ProtonPass through the browser extension or the mobile application. There is no desktop version, and even if you try to go in through the web, it's not going to work. It's going to tell you to go to the browser extension and do everything you need to through there. So that leaves one last area that we have to cover, and that's pricing. What is this thing gonna cost? Well, the good news is that they have a free version available that will give you some pretty good defaults and you can upgrade that to a paid version which will unlock some better features for you. If we look at this, the free version is free and it's gonna allow unlimited logins and notes that you can store in the vaults. You have an unlimited number of devices that you can install this on and you get 10 of those hide my email aliases. That goes back to that simple login acquisition that we talked about earlier. Now for most people, this might be fine in of itself because it is free and you get some pretty good features with that but there are features in the paid version that are worthwhile. Specifically, you're going to unlock unlimited hide my email aliases. You're gonna get an integrated 2FA authenticator, which is gonna help with security on these websites. And you're gonna be able to unlock the ability to create multiple vaults. It's just gonna help with organization. The last option here is Proton Unlimited. This is gonna give you the full featured password manager and it's gonna give you access to every other single tool that Proton has. So if you are in the market to replace Google, this might be a pretty good option for you because it's gonna give you all of the key features that you would be using in Google or some other major mail platform. And to further just highlight the privacy focus that they have, one of my favorite things is that you can pay for this in Bitcoin. So you can go almost completely anonymous here with this purchase of Proton. Now that we have a good idea of the features and the security, let's dig into how to actually set this thing up and use it. To get started, just go over to proton.me slash pass and click on create a free account. This is going to take you into the same page that had the pricing information on it before, and you can choose which version you want. Today, we're just gonna start off with Proton free. From here, you're gonna to have to continue with a Proton account. This is important to understand because you're going to have to create a Proton email address in order to use this service. If you don't have one, you can easily create a new one by clicking on create a new account, or if you already have one, you can just sign in to your account from here. Now I'm already logged in, so I'm just gonna go back and I'm just gonna click on start using Proton Pass now. At this point, Proton Pass is gonna go in and update my account. The first step is going to be installing the browser extension. So again, just follow the prompts here. When you click on this, it's gonna take you over to the Chrome store, and then you're just gonna click on Add to Chrome. From here, I'm gonna add extension, and then we're gonna be good to go. Another page is gonna pop up telling you to pin that. All you have to do is just click the little pin in Chrome, and you'll see it pop up right up top here. From here, there's a little redundancy. You can sign in with Proton or it's gonna ask you to create another Proton account. You already did this, so just go ahead and click on sign in with Proton. If you're switching to Proton Pass from another password manager, again, they make it super easy for you. You just click on import and then it's gonna give you instructions on anything you possibly need to do. From here, you can see all the most popular password managers that are out there, and then you can click through them to figure out how you can get your passwords in there. Typically, this is going to involve exporting them from your other password vault and then importing them into this interface here. It's pretty straightforward, shouldn't take you more than a couple minutes. Now, because Proton Pass is gonna do you a solid, they're gonna give you a free seven day trial to allow you to see all the premium features. So you're gonna be able to test drive this thing out today. We'll quickly take a look at all the general settings that they have here. There isn't a lot to go through. So you have your options for the autofill, you have the option for prompting to auto save, and you have the option to prompt for auto suggesting. All these are on by default. If we go over to security, you have the option to auto lock Proton Pass after a specified amount of time. For whatever reason, they don't have this enabled by default. So I do recommend you enable this and just set something that is tolerable for you. And then that's really it for options. I mean, we can go back to general here and you can see that they have some logs that are available for you. You can see everything that's happening. Most users aren't gonna have to use this. So it's just kind of a nice to have, I guess. Now we can switch over to the browser extension and just see what that's like. You have a pretty basic pop-up here and you have the option to create a login, 
You have an option to create a hide my email alias, a credit card, an encrypted note, and then they also have the ability to add the import password option here too. So all of this is in here. If you want to look at settings again, you can go back up to the top left here and you can see, you can get to the settings from here. The other thing is if you are using multiple vaults, you can create the vaults here. Again, this is on the paid version. So if it is the free version you're using, that's not gonna be available to you. If you wanted to manually create a login, you just click on this, a little thing pops up here and you can go through and enter in all the information here. You click that to generate a password. I like that they're using a memorable password here, or you can do a random password. You just go ahead and pop that up. You know, we'll do eight words here. They have all the different things here. They also have password history, which is really interesting. I haven't seen that before in password managers, though I don't think I've ever actually looked for it either. So pretty good here that you can do all this stuff. So if you go over and look at hide my email alias, you can see it automatically is just creating this random email address for you. You have the option for advanced options here. You can enter in a prefix. And from there, you can see it just pops that at the beginning of that URL or that email address. And then you can change where that is going to forward to as well. Pretty straightforward. So my immediate reaction is it's pretty bare bones. It's not gonna win any beauty contest, but it looks like it works at this point. But let's see how it acts in the middle of trying to register for a new website. So to test this out, I'm just gonna go to a random website, tryhackme.com. And I notice right away that in the email section here, it's got the Proton Pass icon here, which is telling me it's gonna help me start registering for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this here. And then it gives me the option to use my normal email address or to hide my email address. You can see it's just got this random email address here that uh, automatically appends the website name, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna click on that and that's going to auto populate in there. And then I'm just gonna click on join for free. At this point, you can see it allows me to create a username. I'll just do teach me cyber. It has the email address already in there. And then the password option, I can just fill in and copy a password. Good job, it's a very strong password by default. I'll verify that I'm not a robot. Pressure's on here. Okay, everything that is a stare. I think I've got, oh, this is, I hate these. It's a little bit on there. I'm gonna go with it, let's just try it. Okay, I don't think I passed. So we're gonna try this again here. Maybe I am a robot. And there we go. Now we have verified that I'm not a robot. Okay, then I'll just go ahead and click sign up. Now, if I go over to the browser extension again, I wanna see what is in my vault now. And great, it's already created in there and I'm good to go. Interestingly enough, it actually added a note in here, just says used on tryhackme.com. So it's actually putting this stuff in here automatically for you. So if you forget by accident, it's got you covered. And I can see I just got an email to my Proton email address that was forwarded from this email address. So that email forwarding is already working. So that's fantastic. It's a pretty quick tour because there's really not too many features that are built into this password manager yet. So as I said, it's not gonna win any beauty contest, but from a usability standpoint, it was pretty seamless getting that set up with that website. And the thing that I love the most is that email generator because I don't have to use my standard email address or create fake ones. It automatically is taking care of that for me. So while I love the direction that they're going with this identity driven approach, they still have some additional features that they're gonna have to create and put into this to be more competitive with some of the other password managers that are out there. I think the main thing that would sway my decision on going all in on this is if I do want to go all in on using the mail program, the calendar, the drive, everything there. It really is a good ecosystem in of itself, even if it is lagging in some of the other features. So if you are looking to switch your general email provider, this is a pretty good option for the cost that you're gonna be paying for it. If you're interested in some of the other features that other password managers have, check out the channel and make sure that you subscribe because I'm gonna be dropping more on all of the password managers that I'm exploring on my journey.